Five. Sad to Jeunet. The new morality. Ideas do have consequences. Philosophy is not only an academic discipline, but also the plan for living. And the most abstract ideas, within a few years of their acceptance by intellectuals and teachers, become the marching orders of civilization. The modern tendency of abstracting philosophy from life is therefore untenable. One of the immediate consequences of modern philosophy was in the sphere of morality. In its earlier phase, nature had replaced God as the basic and ultimate source of law and meaning. Deism retained God as a limiting concept, a formally necessary idea of logic rather than reality. The concepts of causality from Descartes to Hume required a first cause, and God's function was thus limited to providing this logical necessity. Apart from serving God as the first cause, God was irrelevant, and nature provided all the functions which theology had ascribed to God. Natural law replaced God's law. Natural law, seen as inherent in nature, provided man and his world all the order and structure he needed. Two things served to undermine the supremacy of nature. First, the epistemology of modern thought led to the disappearance of nature as such, as an overall unity and governing body of laws, in favour of fleeting sense impressions. The mind of autonomous man had come to replace nature as the central principle and organising entity. For Kant, the mind of man provided the structure, not nature. Things in themselves are beyond nobility, so that any structure or law they may possess eludes us. It is our mind which is logical, not nature, and it is thus our mind which provides the law and structure we see in nature. Second, with Darwin, nature was reduced to chance variations, so that, in a sense, nature was now known, as far as it could be known, to be purposeless and structureless. Man and society must thus be organised by the mind of man, not by a mythical concept of natural law. Thus, from a relatively free society in which nature provided most of the government, Civilization moved to an idea of society in which man, through the state, or anarchistic man alone, provided the governments. The result was a shift from classical liberalism to socialism and or anarchism. In either case, man being the source of law and structure. Before this shift had fully transpired, however, the idea of nature had been pushed to its limits and destroyed by the Marquis de Sade. The Marquis, Donatien Alphonse Françoise de Sade, 1740-1814, readily saw the weakness in the deification of nature. With God, an absolute and sovereign law prevails over the universe and judges all things therein. The normative is then beyond nature, and nature is the area of the defective, errant or sinful, and it cannot claim ultimacy or perfection. However, once nature is made ultimate, all things within nature are made ultimate and normative, and no standard remains whereby nature can be judged. Whatever is, must thus be right, simply because it is. Alexander Pope, 1688 to 1744, in his essay, An Essay on Man, made this deistic affirmation. Whatever is, is right. More recently, Lenny Bruce held to the same faith. Truth is what is. The Bicknick and Hippy movements adhered to the same philosophy. Morality is ruled out of court. All things are permitted, and there is no ground for objecting to anything. Sad's hatred of God led him to eradicate every trace of Christian morality and law from the contemporary idea of nature. His hatred of God's order in the universe was intense. One of his characters is made to exclaim, Ah, how many times by God have I not longed to be able to assail the sun, snatch it out of the universe, make a general darkness, or use that star to burn the world, 
Oh, that would be a crime. Sad's writings are a long justification of evil and a defence of the right of evil to do what it will. The groundwork had been laid for Sad by other men. Charles de Montesquieu, 1689 to 1755, in The Spirit of Laws, had made laws dependent on climate, circumstance and physiology. He discussed the relationship of law to soil, to nationality, to religion, to the size of a population and much else, and thus prepared the way for a radical relativism which was not his intention. Sad, as a pseudo-masochist, a homosexual, a coprophiliac and much more, was ready to use modern philosophy by forcing it to its logical conclusion. All acts are permitted, but this is not all. When men cut themselves loose from Christian inhibitions and commit evil acts without restraint, then they are not only most natural, most in conformity with nature, but they are inspired. This doctrine of natural inspiration is basic to Sad. Evil is a natural mandate and inspiration. It is the infallible voice of nature in us which Christianity falsely seeks to suppress. True philosophy will thus insist on the necessity and inspiration of evil. In Sad's Philosophy in the Bedroom, Dolmans instructs a girl in this faith. Dolmans Start from one fundamental point, Eugenie. In libertinage, nothing is frightful because everything libertinage suggests is also a natural inspiration. The most extraordinary, the most bizarre acts those which most arrantly seem to conflict with every law, every human institution, as for heaven I have nothing to say, well, Eugenie, even those are not frightful, and there is not one amongst them all that cannot be demonstrated within the boundaries of nature. It is certain that the one you allude to, lovely Eugenie, is the very same relative to which one finds such a strange fable in the tasteless fictions of the Holy Writ. Eugenie. Oh, it is natural? Dolmans. Yes, natural. I affirm it to be. Nature has not got two voices, you know, one of them condemning all day what the other commands. To convince ourselves, let us for an instant scrutinise both her operations and her laws. Were it that nature did not but create and never destroy, I might be able to believe with those tedious sophists that the sublimest of all actions would be increasingly to labour at production, and following that I should grant with them that the refusal to reproduce would be, would perforce have to be, a crime. However, does not the most fleeting glance at natural operations reveal that destructions are just as necessary to our plan as our creations? That the one and the other of these functions are interconnected and enmeshed so intimately that for either to operate without the other would be impossible? That nothing would be born, nothing would be regenerated without destructions? Destruction, hence, like creation, is one of nature's mandates. End quote. Because nature is normative, no crime exists except Christianity with its ideas of good and evil. Love is a myth. No religion, no law and no state can exist. Men are, quote, necessary creatures of nature, end quote. Their natures require fulfilment of their urge to evil. There can be no capital punishment or any punishment because murder is a natural act, as is slander. Theft cannot be forbidden. Every sexual perversion is a delight, not a crime and it is a crime to resist nature. Quote, we listen only to nature's voice. We are fully convinced that if anything were criminal, it would be to resist the penchant she inspires in us, rather than to come to grips with them. End quote. Natural inspiration requires us to commit every evil act we feel an urge to do. Sad cites Thomas Moore's Utopia for Justification. Incest and sodomy are justified, and one of the virtues of incest for Sad is that, quote, it loosens family ties, end quote. 
Bestiality is also justified, and, after Montesquieu, man's nature is seen in terms of physiology. Quote, the penchant for sodomy is a result of physical formation to which we contribute nothing and which we cannot alter. End quote. Infanticide, abortion, euthanasia and status schools are all approved by Sad. Overpopulation is remedied by his sexual programme, he declared. Man's evil imagination is for Sad man's total world. But life is not good for Sad. He saw nature and life as an essence frustration. A point he made in Eugenie de Franval, 1788, and all his works. There is not only a will to evil, but also a will to universal death, to blot out the sun, to kill all men sadistically and to perish in the universal destruction. The universe of modern man has become not only small, as small as his own mind, but also totally perverse with a radical will to evil and a will to death. The impact of SAD on the 20th century is very great. The quote-unquote underground press, the sexually oriented magazines for men and women, television, films and literature all manifest SADian characteristics. To cite an example, Martin Shepard, M.D., addresses, quote, the incest urge, end quote, in gallery. Homosexual, lesbian and sadomasochistic groups now have national organisations, and Shepard hopes that incest will soon gain a like, quote, unquote, respectability. In citing one case of father-daughter incest, Shepard writes, quote, one wonders where the greater abnormality exists among the incestuous couple or within the society that so harshly condemned their relationship with each other. End quote. He looks forward to the day when incest is so routine and normal that someone will casually say, quote, I used to screw mommy, and now we're still good friends. End quote. In science, the Sedean principle is equally present. The Kinsey report advocated premarital sexual freedom for young girls and stated that child molestation was not a crime. The crime, it held, was society's disapproval of such acts, which warped a little girl's mind against the experience. The shape of modern thought, as it envisions its future, appears clearly in Sartre's study of Jean Genet, a homosexual and a criminal. Genet, in prison, came to the conclusion that if modern thought is right, then there is no crime, and instead of being an evil man and a convict, he was the man of the future. His writings gained him a wide audience and freedom. For Sartre, Genet is a saint in the new and modern order. Quote, when evil was possible in his eyes, Genet did evil in order to be wicked. Now that evil proves impossible, Genet will do evil in order to be a saint. End quote. As a criminal, Genet practised evil to offend God and man. As a saint, Genet now recognises that there is no crime and he performs the same acts to free men from the illusion of evil as the saint who leads mankind into a new life. Evil is now impossible because there is no God and thus no law to violate. Genet, as a criminal, stole to defy all order. Quote, I went to theft as to a liberation. End quote. His first liberation was from God. His second liberation was from the idea that the evil he did was truly evil at all. Genet, we are told, quote, has killed the law. End quote. Moreover, quote, the great God of Genet is Genet himself. End quote. Quote, the pure will to evil. End quote, Sartre tells us. Quote, represents spirituality, end quote. Modern man must purify himself by systematically committing evil. Only then can he be a saint in the modern sense. Since man has denied God, why must he also deny the good? Why must he affirm evil as his principle and his way of life? The answer, says Sartre, is that evil alone gives man autonomy, to pursue the good is to surrender one's independence from God and man. Quote, Unless one is a god, 
one cannot make oneself happy without the help of the universe. To make oneself unhappy, one needs only oneself. End quote. Modern man's chosen course is thus a deliberate unhappiness, a self willed alienation and self pity, an affirmation of evil with passion and intensity, and a suicidal course as the climax to unhappiness. The world of Sartre is now, quote, the strut world, end quote, of our cities. The, quote unquote, underground press is an echo of sad. Thus, one writer to the LA Star, 10th of June 1974, finds, quote, sexual activity tame without the added spice of urgency or danger, end quote. Homosexuality, bestiality and like acts are praised in other papers as means of liberation. Narcotics are suggested for the same reason. The deliberately destructive, socially, personally and physically, is in vogue and is intently pursued. The effects of modern philosophy are now apparent in the streets, in the grade schools and in every area of life. Philosophy is not only an academic question, it is a matter of life and death. 